Hey guys, Sir Kirk here, finally with my Warden analysis video on his moveset. What's really cool is, you know, I had to wait a bit because I wanted to do this after Warden's remake because I thought they're going to give him a ton of new cool tools and stuff. I mean, there's some things to look at, but overall, I mean, I think Warden, you know, he kind of has most of the same tools. I mean, they changed some of the things, added like, what, a few new things, but... I mean, you know, it's fun to look at. I mean, from playing as him, um, you know, and looking at it, what he's doing in the games, he's not doing, like, as a general thing, he doesn't really do anything that can be seen as really uncapable. Like, all the things that you do in For Honor are things you can possibly and physically do. The only issue is that some of the things that uh, Warden does are not very practical. So, actually, let me start with uh, the positive things. So... The positive things that I'll say about Warden is um, his stances. So his two side stances, um, they're based off of the plow guard. And they're fine. They're feasible. Some of the basic blocks and stuff that he does from this guard are functional. I mean, some of the parries are over the top. He doesn't need to do all what he does for the parries. But the blocks and the stance themselves are fine. Um, but when he's in his um, top guard or top stance... He's in key guard. I mean, I would change a few things. Like, I would have it so that both of his hands were on the blade versus, like, one hand on it. I mean, it's it still works. You can still do it this way, but that's just what I would do personally. And it would also not have the elbows extended as far out. I'm trying to keep them closer in so they're less of a target. But, I mean, how he does it, they're not too bad. And um, another positive thing about Warden's moveset is... Um, uh, it's, it's kind of a small thing, but um, his top lights, I mean, in-game, they're considered some of the most powerful moves that he has in his tool. But his top lights are, yeah, they're, they're pretty um, pretty good. The fact that they have um, crushing counter frames, or they have, a frame, they have frames where they can essentially parry and counterattack. And then from there he goes into half-sorting techniques, which is very, very cool and very realistic way of how you'd use those moves. So... With that, with um, I wouldn't really change much about his side guard or um, his top lights. But what I would change is after his rework, after they um, nerfed a bit of the damage from the counter, um, the what was it, the crushing counter, how they add it so you get guaranteed another top light from it. What I would do is instead of um, having a guaranteed top light, I would actually like in the same rule of vein how you have like the um. Like, the side lights have another guaranteed side light. Instead, I would have it rising. So, instead of um, coming back up to do another strike, you would rise up for the second hit after that. But, I mean, honestly, those are really solid things altogether. But looking at it, it's a lot, his side lights. So, even though they've been sped up and stuff, realistically, his side lights are not very useful. Because you start from plow, and then you extend out to prepare for a slice. Even though it seems really quick... If you're really in a sword fight, you can react to that very fairly easily. In fact, that was a problem is that um, people could parry um, Warden's side lights, which was kind of hilarious. But in a real fight, you could see that coming a mile away, even though they're considered fast light attacks. So the big correction when looking at the side lights is when instead of reaching out, instead you come underneath, and so you'd rise up to it. So you would go for... Um, uh, was it a rising slash? And then you can still keep the second hit. The second hit where it like, basically is a rising slash on the other side. That's fine. But I wouldn't reach out and try to do that for a light. That's just not really all that practical. And now from there, going on to Warden's heavies. So, no. I mean, in the same vein as the um, side lights, it's the heavies are even worse versions of the side lights. Like... No, just don't even do that. I mean, they would be punished immediately. Like, if you whiff one, like, if you miss one, someone's just going to immediately hit you in between the swings. Like, it's just, no. Just don't don't even try it. But what's funny is that when it comes to, like, high-level PvP in For Honor, a lot of times what people do is they just faint most of the heavies. Which, I mean, yeah, in real-life fights, you'd probably do that. If you're going to go for these overswings in For Honor... It, and definitely, if you were to try that in real life, you would definitely be best to faint into something else. But usually you would faint them into, like, stabs. Which, Warden doesn't have really any stabs besides execution. But they would you would faint from that into, like, a stab. 
which is honestly something that I would change. But um, I, I think the biggest um, things, the biggest defense though, the biggest offense I should say is his um, top heavy. So uh, you know he does have the spinning uh, second heavy, the second top heavy that's an unblockable, which is you know useful. But the fact that you have to spin, no, not no, not a no. Don't don't spin with any of your attacks. That's not that's silly. I mean any of the any of the secondary heavies that require you to spin, no. No, no finishing heavies that spin. That's bad. Once you spin, you turn your back to the opponent. You can't see what they're doing, and they'll counter you. That is a horrible idea. I mean, also, the top heavies, they leave you... There's a lot of wind-up to them, and they leave you really exposed. So if someone were to just impale you while you're charging up these um, top heavies, you, you would just die. And in fact, I believe in the trailer for Ferrari, like one of the original trailers, um, the warden gets killed because he literally gets punished doing that same thing. Like, just charging up a top-heavy and just taking too long to execute it, which is hilarious. But, um, the only merit that I would say about the secondary top-heavy um, is that, you know, when the attack connects, it flourishes into a guard. Which, you know, is my thing. When it comes to, like, martial arts and stuff, especially with sword fighting, when you finish an attack... It's um, it's best to always finish in a guard if you miss an attack or if you try to connect in order to help defend yourself against oncoming counter strike. So, I mean, sure, the startup and the whole attack is just really slow and just, like, it says, just punish me, please. At least it ends with a guard. It, it swings back up to, like, um, an ox guard type of position. So, I mean, it's it has that merit going for it. Um... Also, like with other moves that he has, like for example, we have the uh, zone attack. No. I mean, because on one side, like if you have the zone on one side, he spins around. Again, don't spin. No. And on the other side, it's just a very fast, like, slap move. I mean, you, you won't be able to move the weapon that fast to not make it noticeable. You would, someone will notice that. It's not something you could just do that fast. And also, the fact that the zone attack, it overswings. So, if you were to miss it, someone will just punish you. So, if you were to try to do something like the zone, simply just try to just aim for the person's body. Don't try to aim through. Aim at them. And then... When if you were to miss it, try if you were able to stop it and then put yourself in a position where you can defend yourself, that's good. But don't just throw it out and overswing. That's just not a good idea for how to do the zone if you're trying to pull that off. Then we have um, uh, his two moves, uh, his, uh, what was it, his running heavy. I mean, uh, it, it's fast, it's cool in game. I mean, it's decent, it's not terribly bad. There's a bit of an overswing, but I mean... He goes kind of into a guard, like a low stance after um, hitting it off. So, I mean, I suppose it can be usable. It's not terribly bad, but it's not all that good. But, like, you know, there's, like, you could, if you saw someone charging it, you saw them doing that, you know, you would notice that. In, in the same vein as his, um, uh, was it dodge into, so, like, dodging into a person, then to a heavy, um, <sighs> You yeah you would guess that's what they're gonna do that would be easily countered because that's just kind of an obvious thing to do. I mean it, and it, and the thing is the way he throws himself it, it looks even more ridiculous than um his running heavy because he kind of just throws himself really low when doing it. I mean I would just no yeah it was just 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 punish him just no. The biggest really ch the biggest changes with them is um. You know, I mean, yeah, you can come for an overhead, but make it less obvious and less predictable that you're going to do that. Like, make it so you hide your intentions when you're going into it. But when it, with his dodging heavy, I actually would have changed it so it's actually more of a thrust. So you jump in and then you do a lunging thrust. So in a similar vein, it's like how you see a fencer when they lunge in for a thrust. I would have done that with if you dodge it and then go for a thrusting tech because, believe it or not, you know, unless, um, was it unlike For Honor's Warden, you can thrust with a long sword. Long swords can be used for that, and a lot of the counter um, capabilities of the long swords were from parries and thrust. But you know, that's just something that I would think would have been interesting. Um, I mean, and if, if you know you want to be really cool, you could also add deflects in some of it, and then have like the counter from a deflect be into a thrust. I mean, that would have been pretty historical in the interpretation of Warden. But yeah. Last but not least, I think the other real move we should have to talk about is his shoulder bash. 
Uh, I mean, in, in, yeah, you know, in fights, yeah, you know, there were cases of people shoulder bashing into each other, sure, but usually you would shoulder bash into someone if you had something to protect you, like a shield, not just kind of like your arm, just kind of out there. You would have, you would have something that you could, you know, put between your, yourself and the opponent that could knock them down. But the warden, he just kind of just has his head and his most of his body open because he pulls a sword to the side when doing it. Uh, no. Uh, no. You, that That's not what you would do at all. I mean, I, I would avoid trying to do something unless you had a shield, if you were to ask me. But if you were to not have a shield, I mean, the way I would change it is if you... um. You know, if you had an offhand weapon, or for example, say like a lot of times knights back in the day, they would have daggers, or some sort of like you know, kind of it looked like kind of like a like a a tent pole, a tent stake or something, and you'd basically take this type of weapon, and then when you like approach someone, you would instead use that as um, a way to finish them off. So like say you wanted to aim for their neck or whatever, you would just pull that out and then finish someone off. I mean. You know, I still wouldn't really do this on a battlefield unless I knew that this person was really injured and dying or on the ground and trying something. Like, I wouldn't really do this naturally, but if I were to remake this move, it would be cool if Warden had, like, a secondary weapon that he could pull out for the shoulder bash and then do it. I mean, that's just how I would envision it, but, you know, it, it's it's not um something that I would really do, but, eh, it's whatever. But I think, though, um, oh, I forgot to mention, the one last thing that I want to talk about is, yeah... So, a lot of, um, Warden's, uh, like, his zone attack, his, um, running attack, and his, um, what's it called, uh, dashing in attack, they also have, um, they can also chain into his, um, spin around, uh, on block, I mean, you don't have to, in real life, you don't even have to spin, you could just throw out the attack without spinning, I mean, and you don't have to just take forever to charge, I mean, eh, that, that's just the thing with Warden. He just takes too long to swing a lot of his things. He spins a bit, and he overswings. I mean, but that's with most video games. I mean, honestly, I see why. Because you don't want, you know, if you were to essentially fight, like, realistically, and then put that in a video game, then it would be really hard to react to it. Because, you know, we have a specific, like, you know, reaction time that we predict for humans. And when you're in a sword fight, it's a lot, a lot about prediction and knowing what your opponent's going to do. Because... You know, if they move too fast for you to react to, then you're going to get hit. That's just how on a, the nature of sword fighting. So putting that in a video game, that kind of would be really annoying. So I see from a gaming perspective why it's not the case. But, you know, if you were to try to fight like Warden, you probably wouldn't be too, you wouldn't be too well off. I mean, you know, what he can do is realistic, like I said, but it's not all that practical. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications. I'll see you guys next time with my Highlander video. Take care. Done, my glass.